cool. Hi, I'm back. I hope everyone's well and has been doing okay. I took a bit of time off there, but I'm back with a tutorial for you all as per your requests. And today what I thought would be awesome is to focus in on landscaping. Landscaping is without a doubt my favorite thing about building in The Sims 4. It can take any of the most basic builds and really elevate it to something that looks sophisticated, realistic, and ultimately can also help with your storytelling in game. I feel like there's this idea that landscaping is actually quite challenging and I get it. I mean, there's a ton of landscaping tools that you have to get your head around. And especially if you're a new simmer, it can be really daunting and overwhelming and feel like it's just too much, too soon, too much to take on. And I really want to show with this tutorial that the tools themselves are actually really easy. And when you know how to use them and to use them well, you can actually start doing things that are super creative, things you couldn't imagine when you first started building in The Sims. So for this tutorial, what I think would be the most helpful is to do almost like a build with me style tutorial. We're going to be building a park. A while ago, I did a park called Avaris Acres, which was this sort of like sunken, multi-tiered level park. And people really seem to like that. And the best thing about it is that it uses all of the tools in the terrain menu except for ponds, which are new, but we're still gonna do one of them today anyway, just to show you and get the full coverage of all of the terrain tools that there are. So we are gonna be covering terrain paint, terrain manipulation, ponds, how to integrate sort of outdoor objects and furniture, as well as obviously plants, rocks, you know, all that good stuff. So anyway, without further ado, I'll stop babbling on and we can jump into The Sims and get to building. Alrighty, we're in our game now and what we're going to do is start by opening any 30 by 20 tiled lot. That's the size that I've got open here. I've chosen to go with Tranquil, Tranquil, Tranquil Crescent in Newcrest. And the reason I've chosen this is that it's compatible with anybody who has base game. So you're going to be able to open up this exact lot if you want to follow along with me. And the very first thing that we're going to do is put in our cheat codes because we're going to need them to be able to move objects freely around the map and access all of the debug menu, which we'll get to a little bit later. What we're going to do next is actually open up the gallery because what I've done is I've created the base file for this park. So we don't have to worry about building things like toilets and whatever, because I've already done that part for you. And we can focus purely on the landscaping aspect, which after all is what this tutorial is all about. So if you go up to the gallery in the top right corner and click on the two Polaroid pictures, you can search the gallery for my username, which is Brown Flower Sims. Once you get there, you can view my catalog, which has all of the different builds that I have and Sims and etc. in there. What you're gonna do is find Brown Flower Park Base, which is this file here. So all I've done with this is create a bit of a basketball court and a bathrooms vibe, as well as dropped in all of the community lot objects that you'll need to have this qualify as a park. You don't have to do this step by any means. If you just want to follow on along exactly with what I'm doing, it's going to make it a little bit easier for you. So we're going to place that lot furnished and it's dropped it in for us. Okay. So what you can see here is I've just created a bit of a basketball court. Okay. At the back. And I've also got a block of toilets. I don't really like the toilets that come as part of like the community lot objects. I just think they're really ugly. So I've just gone ahead and made a cute little bathroom here. It's got some lockers. It's got a couple of showers and some toilets for your Sims. And then on the outside, it really is just a cute little basketball court next to the building. If you don't have all the expansion packs, don't worry. I've used pretty much everything from base game except for the basketball court. Okay, so if you don't have city living, which is what the basketball courts come with, that's fine. You'll just have an empty space here. You can pop in an outdoor gym there, some easels, some other sort of skill building items to make your park have a bit more of interest. Or if you want to just delete the platform that it's standing on, you'll just be left with the bathrooms on the right hand side. And that's totally fine as well. But otherwise, guys, we're actually ready to start with our terrain tools now. So the first thing I'm going to show you and walk you through is the actual terrain tools menu, which you can get to by clicking on this shovel that's sort of sticking out of the earth. And there's now a little pond in front of it. This historically was not the case. We've only just been given ponds in The Sims 4. So if you are using maybe like a pirated version of the game, you might not have this update, in which case go and get the real game, you naughty, naughty people. <laughs> 
Otherwise, this is what it should look like for everybody else. Okay, so you click into that and these are your tools. The first thing you've got is your paintbrush tool. Okay, so uh, terrain paint is things like all different types of flowers. You've got dirt, so you've got things like concrete tiles. So from the selection that you get, even just with base game, you can have a lot of variety and you can really make sure that you're making things look nice and realistic. After that, you have your eraser, pretty self-explanatory. Then you have your shovel which is the terrain manipulation tool. I feel like this tool is the most daunting tool for everybody. They don't know how to use it. They don't really understand the best way around this type of menu. And fair enough, it looks very complicated. There's a lot of different buttons and things to choose from, but that's actually where we're gonna start today. We're gonna dig out a hole from the center of our park and I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to use the terrain manipulation tools to help give your park or your landscaping a little bit of extra flavor. So when you go into the terrain manipulation tool and you have your grid turned on, it will show you a map of the entire park. Wherever there is a highlighted yellow square means that your park is flat at that level. So my entire park at this point is pretty much completely flat, which is awesome. It's a great way to start if you just flatten your lot. If you ever do want to just flatten your lot, the way you can do that is by clicking this button on the left, to the right, the right, Lily, on the right. Then we're going to choose our down or lower terrain tool. Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by literally doing a hole in the middle of our park here. Bang, look at that, super fun. You're probably thinking, Lily, that does not look good, but that's okay. This is the basis for us to decide how deep we want our hole to be across the park. Once we've got our little hole in place, we can go across to the flattened terrain tool that is third from the right in or fourth from the left across. <laughs> really bad at my lefts and rights. And it's like a little floating square above the earth. You're gonna click on that. This tool allows you to flatten all of the terrain that's, that you click on to the height of the first clicked area. Sounds really confusing, but I'll just show you exactly what that means. So these lines here show you the depth, okay? And you can see that my cursor sort of steps down across each of these depths. If I choose the point in which I want that sort of lowered level to be and click. Everything in that area will level to that section that I've first clicked on, okay? So now you can see I've got sort of my flat level up top and I've got my flat level in here as well, which is where I want sort of the sunken area of my park to be. All I'm gonna do now is just extend out this area to be a little bit larger. So what you wanna do is make sure you're clicking on an area that is, again, at the height that you want the surrounding tiles to be. And you're just gonna click and drag. I'm making sort of a nice little oval shape. Just like this. Cool. If you ever feel like you've done a little bit too much or it's a little bit too aggressive, what you can do is get the smoothing tool, which is this one in the middle here. It's like a circle on the flat earth. and. If you want to make this uh, a little bit less steep, you can sort of flatten out the edges, if you will, except this is a really aggressive tool to use. So you wanna be making sure that you're doing it on the softer setting and with quite a small brush, okay? See how you can flatten things out like this? So it's good to know about that tool nonetheless. We're not actually going to use it here because we're actually looking for quite a steep incline because we want our plants to really sort of fill that area. So undo that after you've had a bit of a play with it until you get back to this point where you've got a nice big sort of steep circle in the middle. And what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to bring that, that terrain area that's quite low out to the edge of the basketball court. There you go. So now we can see we've got this little drop off area off the edge of the basketball court and we've got this big circle in the middle. It's honestly probably a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit less deep by using the exact same tool again, but this time I'm going to click on the top area and I'm going to bring it forward. Nice. All right. 
So now we've got a big hole in the middle of our park and that's, that's great. <laughs> now, what I also want to put in for the sake of actually demonstrating is a pond. Okay. So the way that you do that is very similar. First, you need to dig a hole in the ground for where all of your water is going to sit. So we're going to get our lower terrain tool. And this time we're going to pick a spot for a pond. So I haven't really got too much room. I could pop one down here, make it even deeper right next to the basketball court there. In fact, that's actually kind of cool. That's way too deep though. <laughs> Remember, you can start with just a basic hole and then you use your flattened terrain to this height tool and you can drag it across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna have a pond off the back of the basketball court here. Okay, and so the next thing that we can do is we can pop in our water. So all you need to do is go to the bottom of your terrain tool section here where it says water tool and you make sure that you're choosing raise water and you fill in that area like you're filling in a bath or a, a bucket of water. You're gonna click in the areas that's lower and it's going to fill that level up for you. So in our case, we're gonna get it up to the top of here. So you can see we've got our nice little pond happening. Okay, very cool. Not very practical because let's face it, a lot of the basketballs are gonna end up sort of in the little lake there, but that's fine. We're being creative with this build. Now at this stage, you're probably thinking, yeah, Lily, it kind of is a bit, you know, it's looking a bit messy, but that's okay. It's meant to look messy at this point. It's meant to look all over the shop. That's totally fine. That's the beauty of landscaping is that it really can just bring everything together for you. So the next thing we're going to have to think about is how people get down into this lower level. And because it is so steep, we're going to have to use some stairs. So if you go to your stairs and ladders menu, and you choose whatever ones you like. I'm going to choose these sort of like red brick stairs because I think that they're probably the most natural looking for a park like this. And I'm going to place in maybe two sets of stairs. Okay. So I'm going to place two that face the street and I'm going to line it up here with sort of where the bollards are at the edge of the park. I don't know. I think that that kind of makes, makes the most sense. So when people walk into the park, they can walk straight into the stairs to get down to the lower level. And I'm also going to place another set of stairs on the left side here as well. So I'm just going to get those same stairs. And then I'm going to place a second set just over here on the other side. Maybe three wide. Beautiful. So now our Sims have a way to get down into that sunken area. And I'm thinking that's sort of where we have our cute little picnic areas where people can cook some lunch, maybe pop a pop a couple of barbecues down there or something. We want this area to have some tiling, okay? So terrain paint's great in certain areas where you wanna bring a bit more realism, but sometimes you want just plain old tiles or bricks or whatever. So we're going to use that to create our pathways. So I'm gonna find a brick that matches my stairs. Here we go. And the first thing I'm gonna do is connect the street to my stairs. So we're gonna go over here, there we go. And a trick with these is that you sort of want, if you're using bricks that match your stairs, you want them to be traveling in the same direction. If they're not, you can just press the side button on your keyboard to twist things and turn things around the same way that you rotate objects. And we're going to do this side here as well. Beautiful. Down here, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to create almost like just connect the dots, okay? So connect the two se sections together. So we've got a couple of corners here that are really aggressive and gross, like they're just really sharp right angles and we want to sort of soften those a little. So if you actually click control F on your keyboard, you can come up with a quarter tile. Okay. So it's like a little diamond shape. It's well, not a diamond, actually it's a triangle and you can pop in quarter tiles to make different sort of angles happening for you. Okay. So I'm going to use that on my edges to make it seem just a little bit softer for us. Okay, so now we've got an area that we know we want to have our Sims where they can dine and they can sort of relax. Maybe that's where they play chess. But what are some other things that people like to do at parks? We've got a lot of kids that probably are going to come here and they're going to want to play on some equipment. So what we can do is decide where we want to put that equipment. And I'm thinking that here where we've got a nice long sort of skinny section that leads up to the bathrooms, we can put in a sand pit and in that sand pit, we can put our play equipment. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get ourselves a fence or a way that we can sort of divide up where our sand is going to go. 
So I'm going to go into fences and I'm going to choose a nice low fence, okay? And because we put in those cheats earlier, the show hidden objects and the show live edit objects, you're going to have more options now. So it's not only showing you the, the uh, objects that you have from your game or your expansion packs, it's also showing you all of the objects that are in the rest of the world or in the rest of the neighborhood. So plants that you wouldn't have access to normally, fences that you wouldn't have access to normally, but have been used in other sort of community lots built by the Sims team, you now have access to those. So that's probably why you're seeing a, a butt ton in here that you're like, wow, why is there so many? That's because I've put those cheats in. Now I am going to just choose a pretty basic fence here. This one here, the Smooth Keeper, it comes with base game. I want to make sure everyone has the option of choosing that. And I'm going to pick maybe a black color because we've got black sort of feature elements in our pillars and the doors of the bathroom and stuff. So I'm going to use that to help tie things in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just build a nice sort of, you know, rectangular section just here, just nice big rectangle. Looks a bit random right now, but when we put some terrain paint in, it will make sense, I promise. And that is the section we're up to now. We are up to the point where we're going to put, pop in our terrain paint. So we're going to go back to our terrain menu and we're going to click on the paintbrush tool. The first thing we will do is fill this up with sand, okay? So if you navigate to the third tile down, which is where it says dirt and sand, you've got all these different options and the gameplay will affect what option you choose. If you're going to choose something that's really dark and muddy and it rains heavily because you have the Seasons expansion pack, it will make little sections full of mud where you've put that terrain paint. It's pretty cool. The same goes with sand. So the reason I want to use sand is because your Sims can actually make sand castles with the sand. So using that as the base of or the terrain, sorry, that is underneath your play equipment also adds another level of sort of gameplay functionality. So I'll use the sand that comes with base game, Sandcastle Dream. And I'm going to change my brush tool here to a square because obviously this is a square section of, of earth that we're filling. So you can do that by clicking on the square brush button. Okay. And again, you've got the choice to change, woo, to change your size. That one's a bit big. I'm just going to pick this one here. I'm just going to fill it in. If you want it to be really nice and neat, instead of just dragging it or whatever, which you can do, for the edges, if you just line it up and click and hold, you end up with a really nice clean outline. So there we have our sand pit, okay? Pretty easy, pretty simple, pretty funky, pretty fresh. The next set of terrain paint that we should think about is the color of our pond, because our pond at the moment has grass at the bottom of it, which isn't really what ponds tend to look like. So what we're gonna do is we're going to choose sort of like a muddy mud, slip sloppy damp mud, which we're going to use to fill up our pond. Okay. And we're going to go back to our circle tool here and we're just going to paint it in along the edges of our pond. In fact, I might see if I can put a little bit more water in that pond. There we go. So it comes right up to the edge. Nice. Okay, so now that we have our pond height to the level that we want it, we're also going to make sure the edges of our pond are nice and brown as well. And while we're at it, we're actually gonna fill in this whole section down here that is lowered. So wherever it's green, we're gonna paint it brown, okay? And the reason that we're doing that is so that we can see where exactly we need to start placing our plants. I like to use the terrain paint as a bit of a guide as to where I'm going to put in all of my plants to be able to Use it almost as like a roadmap or a guide. So you can notice that I'm going right up to the edge of the playground there. I'm gonna fill in this section over here. And I'm actually going to sort of cover or encase our sections next to our walkways. Alrighty, so we've got a lot of area that we're going to need to fill in with plants, but we're still not up to that point yet. What we're going to do is we're actually going to make a few other decisions about where we would have our furniture or our sort of outdoor other, other bits and pieces. So as you can see up here, I've placed the items that you need to have in order to have this lot qualify as a park. And they're not going to stay here. They're not going to stay sitting here. So what we're going to do is we're going to move them to the places that we want them in the actual park. So what I think is it's best to do is put a couple of little picnic benches down here so people can come down, they can have 
have a have a nice meal. I'm going to pop a couple of these benches along the walkway so people can sort of take a seat on their way into the park. And as for the chess sets, I'm not entirely sure where I want to put them yet. So I'm just going to I'm going to put them just out of the way for now and figure out a spot for them later. And I'm noticing that I've got quite a lot of area over here that is now empty. And what I'm thinking could be really cute is to have like a community garden sort of happening where you Sims can come and do some gardening, get that skill up. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get those objects and place them in. And what I might do is also put in a little bit of a fence. I think this little green privacy fencing is actually quite cute and we can make a little section for our community garden. There we go. All righty. Now, when you do place certain objects, you want to make them look like they're actually in the ground, especially when we're talking about garden beds. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our terrain paint tool and we're going to choose a color that sort of allows it to look like it's not just so perfectly sitting on the grass. Okay. So we're going to pick another sort of garden bedlam shade. We're going to get that square shape again, going to make it a little bit smaller. And we're going to do a few little light clicks already looks a little bit more realistic. We're gonna to need to do the same thing again on our hedge because hedges aren't just magically growing out of grass, they're growing out of dirt and the ground. So you wanna make that look a little bit more realistic as well. So what you can do is around the edges of your hedge or your fence, you can spray paint in some dirt. Now, if you ever go out of the lines and you're worried that it looks really messy, that's exactly what our razor tool is for. All right, much, much better. Already looking a little bit more realistic, which we love. And you're probably still thinking, though, it looks like a bit of a mess, but that's what the plants are for at the end, I promise. The next thing we're going to need to do before we do our plants is figure out our pathways, okay? Now, I find it's a bit too much to use tiles everywhere, okay? They have really sharp edges. They don't look natural and organic. And especially when we're talking about paths, or parks, I should say. People don't walk on the path. They often walk through the park, on the grass, all the time. And usually when they're walking the same direction consistently, they end up sort of divoting the grass and making a bit of like a walkway or, or like compressed ground or compressed earth. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and mimic that look at the best that we can, again, using terrain paint. So what you want to do is put your terrain paint tool on the lowest setting of softness. So it's really, really soft. And you're going to use a layering technique here to make it look like it's really seamlessly blended in with the grass. The one I like to use first is scorched earth. This is just personal preference. You can really use any color that you like for this. I'm going to go back to a circle brush again. I'm going to go top down view. And the first path that I'm going to want to create is between the basketball court and this sort of entryway to the park here. So this curving sort of path that leads its way both across to our little garden beds and across to the basketball court. Now, because our tool's on the softer setting, we've got a little more wiggle room with how much we can spray. And I'm going to use my medium size brush here to just create a bit of an outline from one path to another. Really light. The, the key here is to really click as lightly as possible. That already looks pretty good, but it doesn't look super realistic yet. So we've got a couple of options here. What I like to do is actually get a sort of cobbled type stone look and put that over the top. So because again, we're using a really nice light tool, same exact system. You're just going to click in soft sections and pull that across. Look at that. Beautiful, nice and realistic. Now, because people tend to walk around garden beds and sort of the same thing's going to happen here where they're sort of compressing the earth and they're making their own pathway, we're going to do the exact same thing in between our garden beds. So you're going to want to get the dirt tool again, scorched earth. This time we're going to need to make our brush quite small because the space in between our garden beds here is really not very large. And I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to bring across A nice little walkway that sort of connects with this one here. Don't worry if it does look a little bit messy because look, it, it will look a bit messy in real life when you go to parks and people are walking in the same areas. There's bits of grass that grow faster, bits that are dead quicker. So we're just trying to replicate that look here. 
Now that we've got that dirt down, we're gonna get that same cobbled together texture and we're gonna do it again over the top. It looks really messy, but I promise that it will look realistic when we're done with the plants. I know that you're probably hanging out to put those plants in, but we're nearly there, okay? The other thing I think that might look nice in this little section is to have another little little spot for people to sit down next to next to the garden beds, maybe to do some reading, maybe to just watch the flowers grow if that's what they're into. So we're going to get that same bench earlier that we've used for consistency, and we're just going to pop it here. Because we are at a park as well, one of the requirements that you need is to have garbage bins. So we're going to pop one of those in as well. A good trick to follow to make sure that your park or whatever you're landscaping looks like it's meant to belong in the area or the neighborhood you've chosen is to have a look, zoom out and to see what objects are being used in nearby areas. So if I just scroll across here, I can see that I'm using the same bench and the same bin that's used in the neighborhood, okay, which is nice for consistency. If you're in Sulani, you're going to have a very different sort of beachy tropical vibe than if you're in Newcrest, like we are here. The same if you're in Oasis Springs, you've got like a desert vibe, different type of bin, different type of sort of lamp posts and everything there as well. So do take note of what environment you're in in order to help replicate the best aspects of your park and to make it look nice and realistic. So we can see that they've got this little cobblestone, cobblestone bill, bin, pebble bin. I don't even know what you would call that, but we're already using it over here in front of our toilet block. Okay, so we're gonna pick up another one of those and we're just gonna pop it in over here in our garden section. Maybe they're doing some weeding or whatever and they need to pop some stuff in the bin. Alrighty, so we're also going to need to pop a path in over here to the kids' play equipment. So the path for them is going to go between the bathrooms and the play equipment and also across from this side of the pathway to the sand pit. So we're going to follow our exact same process again. We're going to get our terrain paint, starting with dirt. All right, and we'll clean this up. So we're just going to go in and get our sand tool again and just go over the areas that we've just had a bit of spill. So now that we've got our sections all spaced out, the only thing that we're still yet to pop in is a place for our chess boards. And what I'm thinking could be quite nice is to have our chess boards sit underneath some beautiful trees. How do we choose trees, you might ask? It might be as simple as just clicking on the tree icon and picking whatever one your heart desires, which you totally are welcome to do, that's fine. But if you're wanting to get some more realism in your game, the best way to pick your trees and which ones to use is to look again at the neighborhood and what's surrounding you. So if I zoom out again, I can see that I've got these big sort of I want to say birch trees or fir trees. I've got even got these really cute little pink trees as well. So if I choose trees that are existing around the environment, it's going to make my build look like it's more seamlessly placed and that it's actually meant to be there. So I've just selected an oak tree here and I know that this oak tree matches the ones that are surrounding us. So if I pop in an oak, it's going to help everything look like it belongs. I also want to pop in one of those cute little pink trees as well, maybe on the other side of the park here. We want to make our trees look like they're embedded in the earth. And so we're going to go back to our terrain paint. We're going to choose another sort of nice little garden shade, and we're going to paint around the base of our tree. Now we've got some cute little shady spots for us to pop in our chess sets. So I haven't mentioned this yet, but if you do want to free rotate all of your items, you can obviously have them rotating on a 45 degree angle. But if you want free rotation, meaning that you can have them at any angle that you like, you can hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and you can free rotate. See how I have so much more control over the axis of this? Also, when I'm holding the Alt key, I can move my object and place it wherever I want on the grid. It doesn't have to be snapping to the tiles. So see how I can place it anywhere? Whereas if I let go of the Alt key, it's going to snap onto different areas of the grid. So the Alt key is really powerful because you can get things up nice and close to other objects. I'm gonna pop that one there. Nice and close up on that tree. Okay, so I'm also gonna pop in a couple of barbecues down here. A couple more bins. All 
Alrighty. So it already is looking great, guys. We've, we've obviously got a lot of what we need here to be able to build out our landscaping. So there is a lot of sort of grunt work that goes in at the beginning to make sure that you've got things where they need to be. But once that's done, the fun stuff can begin. So we're finally up to the point where we can start adding in plants. Hooray! So similar rules apply to the plant options as it does to trees and mimicking what is around you in the environment. So it's always good to have a look at the plants that are around you and use those as inspiration for your park or for your landscaping. So if I go over here, I can see there's some nice wild flowers. They've got these beautiful yellow flowers here, a few nice sort of feature shrubs along the edge of the road here, as well as some like mossy covered rocks. We've also got some options over here to look at in regards to the pond. So they're using some nice little sort of weeds, I suppose, and some lily pads. So we can use that as a reference for what we should be doing inside our own park with our landscaping. So the first thing we're going to start with is actually the pond. The first thing I notice is that the color of the water is probably not pond colory. So I'm going to change that. So in order to change this color, you're going to go to outdoor water decor, which is like this little log thing. And we're going to change the color. You've got heaps of different options here that now come with base games. So you've got things like mossy water, you've got leaf covered water, green water, a bunch of whole other varieties. And depending what other expansion packs have, you'll have other things as well. Like there's a green. I'm going to choose the pond water, funnily enough. You can choose whatever you like. You might like sticking with the, with the sort of blue pond. That's totally up to you. You can choose whatever you like. Now, the next thing we need to do is disguise the edges of our pond here because they're really jagged. They've got lots of sharp angles happening and that doesn't really look very good at all. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into our pond decorations sort of section, which is just underneath the watercolor option. And we're going to start popping in some different bits of plant life. Start with reeds just along the edges. And when you're popping in reeds, you want to make sure that you're alternating the angles so it doesn't all just sit block, 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 read. So this is where that free rotation tool is going to really come in handy. You're going to hold down Alt for every individual one that you place and change the angle slightly. The other thing that you're going to want to do is alternate the scale of your objects or your plants in particular. Because we're going to be using a limited selection of plants, we're going to want to make sure they look different enough. So to change the scale of your plants, you can use the bracket keys, which are above the return or enter key on your keyboard. You use the one on the right, it makes it bigger. If you use the one on the left, it makes it smaller. So I actually quite like having long reads and sort of experimenting with like the size of things here. That's a real big read there. That one's probably a bit too big, but you know, whatever. We're just gonna go with it at this point. The next thing I'm going to place in is another couple of things. So we've got a bog log, which is kind of like a weird little floating log, I guess, covered in moss. I'm also going to add in a bunch of these little lily pads because they're super cute. They bring a bit of color. Again, it's going to be really important here that you're rotating everything that you're popping in just to make it look a bit more randomized. Now, we've also got this sort of front section here as well. So I'm not going to use reeds there as much as I'm going to use some other plants from the other menu. So this is sort of good for now. I haven't put any fish in because I know that just around the corner up there you can go fishing. So instead, this is more of like a decorative sort of one. But we are going to pop in some sort of fish decoration type things. So I want to have a couple of ducks in here or maybe even a pair of swans. That's quite cute. So I might just click pair of swans and pop them in the very middle of the lake. Because we're in build mode, you're not going to be able to see them sort of floating around. But needless to say, they will be there when you play in live mode. I'm also going to put in some country fish. They're just decorative, so they're not, um, you can't fish, but that's fine. Alrighty, and then the next thing we can do is continue building out this landscaping. So the same with the pond stuff. 
Exactly the same rules apply. With your plants, you wanna alternate their size and their angle to get the most realistic look. And a general rule of thumb as well is that you don't want to choose too many plants. A common mistake, especially when you're starting out, is that you get really excited by how many options there are and you pretty much put every single plant there is to put into your builds and into your landscaping. And it ends up making it look really messy and just not very realistic. Power to you if you love that look, like go for it, go for gold. There are no rules with The Sims, but if you are trying to have something and achieve something a little bit more realistic, then I would suggest choosing no more than five different plants to fill up your space, which is exactly what we're going to do today. So we're going to start by picking our five options. The first one I'm going to pop down is these wildflowers. I'm also going to pop down some lavender bushes. Okay, they kind of, I know they're two different plants, but they count as one because they look identical. They're just different shapes. And then I'm going to also pick this big shrub thing, an unkempt shrub. And I'm also going to choose the unkempt shrub in a different shape, okay? So this is what, one, two, three, four, and we can pick one more. The other one that I love to choose that's really easy and helps fill out a lot of area are the yellow flowers. So these are our five sort of bushes. All right, five sort of sections of flowers and shrubs and plants and whatever. So keep in mind that with changing the scale and the angle that they look like they're on, you're gonna get a lot of variety out of just these five separate looking things. So we're gonna start with this sort of section just here, this big brown patch. And once you've chosen your five flowers, you can use the eyedropper tool. So if you click E on your keyboard, we can't see it, there it is. Wherever you select, whatever you hover over and highlight, if you select it, it's gonna give you a new version of that. We're gonna start with our pale flowers. We're gonna hold down shift so we've got multiple versions of them. And we're going to start placing them. Always holding onto that Alt key, to make sure we're getting the most variety out of our shapes. And because we've got like an inclined slope here, it's going to clip into parts of this hillside, which is a good thing because it's gonna help us disguise the fact that there is a hill. Beautiful. Looking real messy at the moment, but that's what it's meant to look like, I promise. Next, we're gonna grab our bush, okay? Our, what is it? A unkempt shrub. All right, and we're going to experiment with some different scales here. So we're just gonna pop it in a couple of times at the size that it's sort of meant to be at. Then we're gonna do one where it's really big. Okay, beautiful. Again, I'm just holding that Alt key and I'm just using brackets to shift that up and down. I'm also gonna do a few where it's nice and small. All right, already looking quite nice and picturesque. The next thing we're gonna choose is our tree one, our unkempt, our tall unkempt shrub. We're gonna pop him in in a couple of places. Then we're gonna get our lavender. Lavender's great with the shape of it as like a bit of a filler plant, okay? So it also looks identical to wild grass. So if you don't want the purple effect, but you want that sort of fill in shape, you can choose wild grass instead. So I'm gonna use both actually to fill it out. Yes, I'm using six different shapes here. So I do know I'm breaking my own rules, but that's okay. This is where it becomes really like coloring in. You just see sections that need a bit more fill and you just start filling them in. Assorted wildflowers I tend to do last because they're quite sparse, I suppose, looking. And just like that, we've filled in a whole section of landscaping. Now it looks a bit messy because these ones down here, I'm gonna delete these now. Look at that, beautiful. Now what's missing from this that's gonna really make it look realistic is rocks, okay? So I do that now, I'm gonna grab my rocks and I'm going to start popping them in. Exactly the same situation with rocks. So you're going to use the Alt key to get free movement and you're gonna place it in where you think it's looking a bit sparse or a bit bare. Now, whilst you can go really overboard with your plants, that's great. With rocks, you wanna hold it back a little bit. You wanna really not put too many in there because then it gets a bit messy. So what I like to do is put in a couple of small rocks to begin with. All right, and then I like to put in big rocks or feature rocks, okay? So I like to scale them up. Look at that, beautiful. Starts to look a little bit more realistic. 
We're also going to get some rocks in over here underneath at the back. This sort of ends up, it ends up making it look like it's sort of a garden bed, if you will, like it's been designed as such to grow within the rocks, which is cool. We like that. That's sort of a good look and feel. Nice. There you go. And you can see we've just filled in a whole section there. Super easy, super simple. Okay. And it's looking really nice. So we're just going to continue that, that sort of treatment with all of the spaces that we've put in this sort of colored brown. All right. So I'm going to speed through this and do it sped up because obviously this is going to get very long if I don't do that. <laughs> so I'll see you on the other side. It's literally a case of just slapping things in everywhere, using the eyedropper tool and just picking up the same plants you've already put down. You don't have to go into the menu for anything. So it is actually quite quick. It does feel at the beginning, maybe like it's looking really messy and it's just like, oh, I don't know, but keep persevering, keep pushing through. I promise that once you've got everything in there, oh, just burped. I promise once you have everything in there, it will look nice and realistic. The thing about these plants at these parks is that they're just, you can go crazy with it, you know? This is probably a little bit more overboard than you would go with backyard landscaping for your Sims houses, but it has the same general principles. Use the same groups of plants, use terrain paint first to sort of mark out your areas, use a combination of scale and, and sort of rotation to help give you a bit more sort of variety in what your plants look like. And that is really it. Seriously, super easy and simple. All right, so we're gonna put our monkey bars in. And see, they're not really looking, they kind of look like they're floating. So we're gonna use our terrain paint here again, and we're going to use just a little bit of a darker sand color this time. Click on each corner to make it look like they're sort of buried into the sand. Look guys, this is really the guts of it now. Like you have pretty much the full park finished. This is when you can start making some decisions about what you think might be missing. We'll need to do some outdoor garden lighting, which I'll do in a moment. But for the moment, I also thought what I could show you is how to do some wall decoration landscaping type stuff. I use a lot of ivy and things like plants that climb up the wall in my Sims game. So this is the perfect opportunity for us to do that over here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into wall sculptures. Now, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of base game options for things like ivy and plants climbing up the wall. So if you do just have base game, unfortunately, you might have to skip this step. But for those that have get together, for example, that is my favorite type of ivy. It's this one here, Yoldi University Ivy. Now, same rules applies when you're placing the rest of your landscaping, even when it's across a wall. You want to alternate in size, scale, and position. So, well, size and scale are the same thing, but you <laughs> get what I mean. So we're going to click and have it sort of climb up the wall, a few big ones, and then I'm going to shrink down it a couple of sizes for the edges. Very nice. Then I also want to have a few little flowers in there. So there's also with um, get together is this really cute little pink ivy flower thing. So I'm going to put a couple of different ones of this in, but again, I'm going to alternate with my size. Also for a bit of realism with get together comes these like drain pipes. So I'm going to pop in some drain pipes as well. Beautiful. Look at that. Now for an extra little spicy touch to make it look more realistic with, um, what's it called? This one, Jungle Adventure. You get these like little stone block things. And I like to use them at the very bottom of the wall to sort of hold them in to kind of make it look like a bit of a garden bed. All right, so I'm gonna put in another little bench over here, another little cute spot to sit. Get this guy again over there. So if you wanna watch your kitties play, you can. And then otherwise I'm feeling like over here is looking a little bit bare. Like, yes, the walkway goes from here to here, but this section here is where I'm thinking we could actually use some more plants as well.
Alrighty, I could keep going with this forever, but I think we're in a pretty good spot now. So now I think what we need to do is put in our outdoor lighting. I've already put in some lighting over at our toilet block. Okay, so if I go to nighttime, you can see I've got a little light out the front there and some little lights around our basketball court. But we want it to be nice for everybody else if they're coming to the park at night or perhaps they're having an awesome day that they end up being here for the nighttime as well. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to outdoors, in our build by menu and we're going to go to lighting. I like to hide my lighting for the most part inside the shrubbery and landscaping that I've done. I also like to choose lights that match the rest of the park's aesthetic. I'm going to get these cute little garden lamps. Here we go and pop them just all over the place inside my landscaping. All right, guys, that's really it. I hope you enjoyed the video and you've learned something from this tutorial. Please let me know if the style suits you or if you'd rather things that are a little bit more bite-sized, quick, quick tips and hints versus these sort of long-winded sort of build with me style tutorials. I know that for some people, they really liked how slow I went in a previous tutorial. So I tried to emulate that again here, but of course I want to grow and create content for you guys that you really want to see and that you get the most out of. So do let me know if I'm succeeding at that or if I need to make some changes to help accommodate you. If you like what you saw, please give the video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.